Coming up on First at Four, someone broke into a woman's car and stole several items, including her purse. Now police in Corbin are trying to find the suspect. And we'll take you behind the scenes at ARH Cardiac Rehab and Hazard and talk to one of the patients. And rain transitions into snow later tonight. We'll break down the timing and impacts together. First at Four is next. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at Four, police in Corbin need help identifying a truck they say could lead them to who stole a purse and other items from a woman's car. WYMT's Hannah Reynolds is in Corbin with the latest on the theft. I talked to police here in Corbin that say this all happened last Tuesday when student Samantha Jordan walked into the gym beside Kroger. Samantha Jordan walked inside the workout anytime around 11 p.m. When she came outside, she noticed her front passenger side window was broken into. While looking around, she noticed her purse and wristlet stolen. She says she is just thankful the gym had video they could use to see this truck, but now she needs help in identifying just who was driving it. I didn't think it would happen to me because like I just have, I go to school, I babysit for my aunt, that's my work, so I have a pretty boring life, so I didn't think it would ever happen to me, and it did. Now while the insurance did cover that student's window that was busted out, she estimated that with everything stolen, it was around $1,000 that now she's going to have to replace. For now, in Corbin, Hannah Reynolds, WIMT Mountain News. Right now, there are no leads or suspects. We'll have more on this story tonight at 6. It is a difficult day for the family of Sheena Baxter. The Madison County Coroner confirms a body found yesterday was Baxter. Investigators said Baxter's body was found at a storage facility in Richmond, just down the road from her ex-boyfriend's house. A grand jury indicted Joseph Hicks, Baxter's ex-boyfriend. Now Baxter's family says they are preparing to make funeral arrangements. I just want to bring her home. That's all that I could take. Hicks will be arraigned Monday. His attorney says they want to keep the focus on Baxter's family right now. The mother of a missing Tennessee toddler was arrested after police say she made false police reports. At a news conference today, authorities said they are shifting their search to a pond in Wilkes County, North Carolina. The Sullivan County Sheriff's Office arrested Megan Boswell last night. She is the mother of Evelyn Boswell, the missing toddler. Court documents reveal Boswell told investigators Evelyn was with her father on February 18th. She was supposed to pick Evelyn up a day later, but deputies say Evelyn's father is enlisted in the U.S. Army and stationed in Louisiana. Evelyn remains missing. To help end a part of his family's nightmare, an Indiana grandfather is expected to plead guilty to negligent homicide in the death of his granddaughter. Salvatore Anello was on vacation last July with his granddaughter Chloe Wiegand and family aboard a cruise ship in Puerto Rico. Anello said he picked up Chloe to knock on the window's glass as they did many times before. He did not realize it was open. Chloe dropped more than 150 feet to her death. Anello said nothing prosecutors could do to him is worse than the guilt he already lives with. Well, those wet and cloudy conditions have really left us looking kind of gloomy today. You can see those if you look out into the WYMT studio camera. Very, very thick cloud cover out there tonight, and we're still seeing some showers come down. Slick pavement as well, so just be careful if you're out on the roadways tonight. You can see that over into Stonecrest as well. I mean, even a few raindrops there on the camera lens. And then here's these showers that we've seen coming through over the past couple of hours. The good news is it looks like those heavier bands of yellows and oranges are now kind of to our east and just now starting to push out of our area. But as we go into tonight, temperatures are going to drop and we're going to start to see these rain showers transition into a little bit of snow. And with that, the National Weather Service has issued a couple winter weather advisories for Harlan, Letcher and Wise counties through tomorrow morning. But I will be giving you more details about that and possible impacts we could be seeing in just a little bit. I'll also let you know about more snow that we could possibly be seeing coming up on Friday and how we get temperatures to finally warm up as we go into March. Steve. 
All right, thank you very much, Brooke. Earlier today, all traffic north and southbound on Pine Mountain in Letcher County was shut down. The cause? A drilling rig broke down. WIMT's Lacey Roberts reports from where that traffic was being redirected. At around noon today, Highway District 12 made a Facebook post explaining the reason for those flaggers and why they were redirecting that traffic. And in that post, they also said they had no idea how long this road would be blocked. Now I have been out here for the past couple of hours and have seen numerous people turn around or either take the detour and this detour to many was not an ideal option as the road is very narrow just for one vehicle, but for two, it's almost impossible to pass. I spoke with a local contractor who says this route is just not safe. It's a, it's a hectic thing if you get a meet a lot, you know, because there are very few driveways that you can get in, you know, with all the vehicles that's traveling this way right now. And that road to Pine Mountain is back open. Road officials just ask that you use caution when traveling in either direction. In Letcher County, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. All right, so the good news, the road is back open. February is American Heart Month. WYMT's Madison Program stopped by ARH Cardiac Rehab to learn how people work to keep their heart healthy. It may just look like an average gym. Most people do treadmill, new step, recumbent bike, the arm ergometer, and the step. But the equipment here at ARH Cardiac Rehab is not just to get fit. Yeah, at 184, excellent. To uh, get back into shape, um, strengthen their heart, their mortality, they have mortality benefits. Um, decrease hospitalizations, etc. For phase two patients, they first start by putting on a heart monitor and checking vitals after every station. Number three, and we've got to turn it on this first button, RL, right here. Larcina Evans, a registered nurse, getting them started. You reset it, and then you're on 10 minutes or eight? Eight. But Paul Hall is in phase three and has been a regular since 2007. It's healthy. It's affordable and it's very good, got good treatment. The uh, staff here are wonderful. After nearly 1,400 visits, it's more than just getting exercise. The camaraderie is my favorite part. It is also about the people he works next to. It, it keeps me going. Uh, my cardiologist says, come back in a year and this time, he said, come back one more year and then I might recommend two year visits. So. That's good. Making improvements and continually working towards a better, healthier tomorrow. In Hazard, Madison Pergram, WYMT Mountain News. Patients can visit cardio rehab every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. CDC health officials warn it is not a question of if, but when the coronavirus will spread to the United States. In Europe, Italy is now reporting about 350 cases, prompting the State Department to issue a travel advisory today, asking U.S. citizens to exercise increased caution when traveling there. There are now 80,000 cases of the virus worldwide. Health officials say the U.S. needs to be prepared for a pandemic. We need everybody to be thinking about this and uh, really dusting off their pandemic plans if they're a public health department. Federal health officials stress the outbreak is currently contained here in the U.S. President Donald Trump is holding a news conference tonight at 6 to discuss the matter. An opioid company reached a $1.6 billion settlement agreement. Mallinckrodt says the deal resolves all drug-related claims against the company and its subsidiaries. The agreement is with attorney generals for 47 states and U.S. territories. When Governor Andy Bashir was attorney general, he sued the company in 2018. The payments for plaintiffs will be received over an eight-year period. Funds will be used to help take care of addiction costs and additional needs. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Wednesday afternoon. The downward slide continues, though not as bad as the last couple of days. The Dow closes down today more than 123 points. Lawmakers want to ensure the 2020 election is fair. I'm Katherine Johnson on Capitol Hill, where civil rights leaders warn of active voter suppression. And winter is not over yet. I'll have more details on the snow showers we are expecting later tonight coming up.